Um, so I'm like the happy helper until I feel martyred. Like I will help you all day long until I feel like you're taking advantage of me or I'm the only one doing everything. And then I am like not fun to live with, right? So I had to recognize that. Like I need everyone around me to be helping and pitching in. So today we have Dawn from The Minimal Mom. She helps many, many people with decluttering and motivation. And I really enjoyed our talk. So let's jump in. Everybody must be very excited. I'm happy to introduce Dawn from The Minimal Mom. Thanks for being here, Dawn. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. I know my audience is so excited that you are here and I asked them questions and they gave me a bunch, but I just want to dive in right away. So you love, just like I do, you really like to promote minimalism. And I'd love for you to tell me a little bit about yourself and then your story that brought you to that point. Yeah. I mean, so if we go back in time, nine years ago, we had four kids ages four and under and I thought life was busy then. Uh, turns out it gets busier as they get older. But I just, I just so distinctly remember thinking, like, is is this just what it's going to be? Is this just what being a mom and managing a house is going to be? Because it was hard, it was messy, it was not enjoyable. I, it just felt really hard. And so. That year I was just Googling, I was on Pinterest and I came across a podcast with Joshua Becker and he said his famous line of, did you know that you don't have to have all of this stuff? And I think I was just so desperate at the time that that's all he had to say. And I questioned everything. I was like, I don't know. Do we have to, do we need this? And I started looking at everything. And I mean, you know, Robin, back then there wasn't a lot of information on minimalism and simple living. And so I just decided to do an experiment and just see if we got rid of um, a bunch of our physical possessions, if that would help. And uh, kind of like the benchmark I had in mind was like, I would like that like every room in our house, we could just pick it up in like five minutes, like none of this full day things of having to clean and take care of our whole house. And I, I was surprised how much I had to get rid of to get to a point where each room was really easy to pick up. Um, and so we ended up getting rid of about 80% of our stuff over a year. I say we, I ended up getting rid of it. I did not tell my husband what we were doing. Um, and I found so much freedom and now that was nine years ago. And I couldn't even imagine now having all that stuff back and trying to do it all with the, the season we're in with our kids and activities and all of that. Um, it has made life so much better. And so of course now, like you, I'm just like, I just want to tell everyone about it and just give them permission to say good news. You don't have to have all of this stuff either. Yeah. It's funny because whenever I, and I know everybody has like different thresholds, um, as I think it is, um, Dana says, and, and, yeah. and, but I, it, I like, it almost feels like being like a really thirsty or like my heart mm -hmm. or like my soul is being crushed when I think about what my own house was yeah. like before. And that's just yeah. it. Like, and, and I didn't realize it at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, like you well, don't realize it. And it, I mean, we, and we didn't have the research either, right? Like now we can see studies that directly correlate clutter and stress and, I was visiting with some gals in our mentorship group recently and I'm, I'm really trying to hard to keep all of our flat surfaces like really clear. Like they were pretty clear in the past. Um, but like even now I'm realizing my own sensitivity because we're in a busy season to things that are just like sitting out and aren't put away. Our brain is constantly registering that like, Oh, there's something that needs to be done. Oh, you're not doing that. Why aren't you doing that? That needs to be put away. You need to do this we can't really be at rest even in our own home. And so it's like, we never get a break from it. And so even now I've been like so aware of just making sure things get put away and, and, and keeping it picked up. And that was never me in the past. I grew up in a messy house. I thought I'm creative. I'm free spirited. I'm kind of messy. It's fine. Like, um, I'm not, I, that doesn't affect me. That's not a big deal. And honestly, I don't know, maybe in the past it didn't affect me as much, but now like, again, just navigating a really busy season, just lots of things going on. Um, I just feel so sensitive to that. And I feel like when our house is in order, it doesn't have to be perfectly clean, but when it's just picked up, pulled together, I just feel like I can just like my, my body just like sighs and it's like, okay, like I can fully relax, rest, recharge before we take on another day. That's just it. Like we, 
you women, I, there was a study I read. This was actually right around the time when it's Joshua Becker also was what got me going years ago. And there was a study that said that women are more affected. And there yes. are studies that show that, mm -hmm. that even like the cortisol levels, if a man typically are, mm -hmm. you know, they're not as bothered by the clutter in a home. And I yes. think it truly is because, you know, we we're, were like designed to be a certain way and, and, you know, the home is our domain and, and we really, it doesn't feel like the day is ever done yeah. or you can sit down and put your feet up and have a cup of tea yeah. if it's, if it's messy or cluttered or whatever. And I mean, I grew up in, with relatives who had, you know, stacks of national geographics in the hallway and that was like, you kept everything. Yeah. 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 So I think it's good that there's a lot more awareness now. And um, I did an interview with uh, Britt Frank, who's a psychologist. And and I was like, okay, Britt, I don't want to just now be piling on everyone's to-do list of like, well, now you got to get your house decluttered. And now there's shame around this if your house isn't and, you know, the impact it's having on your kids. And, and she said something that was helpful. She's like, you don't have to go that far. She's like, just be aware of it. Like, just start to notice like, okay, well, maybe that's why I'm feeling unsettled in my house is because of this clutter. And so over time, I want to begin to work on changing this. And we know like, you can't do it all in a weekend or, you know, we, we glamorize like, well, I'm going to get a sitter and I'm going to rent a dumpster. And for a full weekend, I'm going to declare and it's not practical, right? Like it just doesn't work that way, but just start to be aware of it. Like, how is this impacting me? What would it feel like if I, you know, if my bedroom wasn't quite so cluttered or there wasn't piles of stuff on the floor, what would that feel like? And then from there, start to make a game plan to be able to tackle it. Yeah. And just bit by bit, like even if you think about, you know, Michelangelo doing a sculpture, right? Like just chipping away at a big old piece of, of marble, it can totally happen. So how do you think people can start decluttering when they are overwhelmed? Yeah. Cause that's the big thing. It's, it's lack of time, but it's also lack of like mental capacity and bandwidth. Right. It, it's, um, where it's just like, ugh. like decluttering is actually a lot of mental work because we're making a lot of decisions. Like, do I need this? Am I going to use it in the future? What if I get rid of it? And then I do need it. What if someone else in my family notices it's gone and they need it? There's, I mean, we're just questioning every single thing. And so recognizing it's a, it's a lot of mental work. And so if we're already feeling kind of drained, um, we have to use really small chunks of time. So five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, we just set the timer and we pick one small area. And I know you're a, you're a fan of this method too, Robin, that one small area that I can complete this task. Like it might, I, yeah, I'm not pulling out everything in the linen closet or a full closet worth of stuff, but I could tackle this drawer or one shelf in the linen closet. And in five minutes I can make a pass. I can declutter a few things we don't need. I can straighten everything up, which just automatically feels better to our brain. And I'm going to look back and I'm going to feel like I completed something. I felt, I feel successful at it. And that, that, those small wins, that's what starts to give us the momentum. And then that creates motivation then for us to keep tackling other areas too. Absolutely. Yes. I love any, any little small win anytime mm -hmm. because yeah. the junk drawer for me, it just keeps getting messy. Like it just yeah. does. That's where <laughs> like, if my husband is like cleaning he throws everything in there and it, it's, so, but, but once it's done, it just feels so good yes. to open it up and be like, oh yeah, yeah. you just want to look at it. Right? Oh, like, I yeah. Know. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> like walk by yeah. and I'm like, mm, mm -hmm. yeah, it's great. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Um, and then what, so now there are some people who they don't, and and I don't think everybody needs to be minimalist, of course, but tell me what you like about minimalism yourself. Yeah. I mean, honestly, again, our kids are, we have four kids are nine through 14 now and we keep our schedule. Like I don't agree to a lot of activities and stuff, but our, our older two are in plays now. And, uh, so it's, not necessarily like week in, week out, there's not as many activities, but the few weeks when it's like tech week and there's the performance and I'm like, we just live in the car and like, you know, and so there's so many nights where I walk back in our house and I, I just look around and I think, I don't know how I would do this with how our house used to be in the past. I would feel so frazzled. 
Um, it may, you know, clutter makes everything harder. It's harder to find the things you need. It's harder to make dinner at the end of the night. Um, it's harder to get dressed in the morning, like just to do all the things. And so I, I thought I was grateful for our minimalist home when our kids were little because it definitely made that season easier. But I think I'm more grateful for it now because I feel like I can be present as a mom and I don't feel frazzled and I don't feel like I'm, you know, letting my stress leak onto them because I'm, I'm just always running around. Um, and so I feel like I'm really able to enjoy this season now with our kids and I don't, I, I also realize I, I don't forget things when it's like, oh, they're supposed to, they're signed up to bring snacks or it was Corbin's birthday the other day and he wanted to bring treats to his classroom. And I'm like, I'm on it. Like I've got it. Like it, it just makes all the pieces kind of fall into place and I don't find myself forgetting things and being behind and, and being frantic anymore. Yeah. I think it really does just help with just sort of like the mental clutter overall. Yes. And a lot, there are so many people with, because I have ADHD and everybody in my house, except for one kid <laughs> doesn't, it, he doesn't have it. Everybody else does. And, you know, a lot of people, they can manage fine mm. in a cluttered environment. Yeah. Like they're not like, you know, curled up in the corner, like rocking, but it's, it's once you actually like remove that stuff where you think like, oh, like I have yeah. space to think and, mm -hmm. and yeah, like just being able to make something for your kids or I like, you know, if, if I put, leave something on the counter, there's nothing else on it. So it's yeah. like, oh, there's this thing. Yeah. Like I can see it there. Mm -hmm. It's very, very clear. Yes. And I don't miss any of this stuff. I think that's what continually surprises me. You know, people often ask, but like, but what have you have decluttered that you've regretted? And I'm like, it's so few things. I don't miss any of the stuff. I just, I, it's, it still surprises me. Cause I'm like, we've gotten rid of thousands of items in our house. I mean, I've gone even further with decluttering our house now. Cause it just, like, I feel like that's what we need right now in this season. And I still, I just look around and I'm like, it's just so strange to me. Like I don't miss any of the stuff. We're like conditioned to believe like all these products are going to fix our problems and make life easier. And isn't it amazing how actually they just make life harder. And so I just don't miss any of it. Yeah, it's true. It's funny because I, there's one thing ever that I decluttered that I repurchased. It's not even like, and I don't even regret it. And it was six yeah. big jars to make kombucha. But yeah. the great thing is for a year, I didn't have big jars yeah. kicking, like big glass jars kicking around the house. Like I'm okay yeah. that I spent, you know, exactly. $20 to repurchase those things. Yes, so exactly. Yeah. So you have never made, a, you, don't, you don't regret any of the things you decluttered, any sentimental things because you keep some sentimental mm -hmm. things like it's okay to keep some things right and i think that's where a lot of people get stuck absolutely and now our sentimental things are actually special and they're curated in a way where we can revisit them and we actually do you know in the past when the you know the kids baby things it was spread out across multiple totes and in different places. Like I wouldn't have said, Hey, let's go find the outfit you wore home from the hospital. That would have been like a crap show, right? Like pulling out bins and then they're digging through everything and it creates a big mess. Now I can pull out their memory box and I'm like, yeah, let's, here it is. Let's look through it. Like it's, it's fun to revisit it. So when everything's special, nothing's special. Right. And so by having like a curated collection of these things, it's so fun. And I just see that as a gift to give our kids that, whenever they leave the house or they want their memory box, they can take it with them. And then it's already neatly curated and they can look through it with their kids or their spouse or whoever they want to. Like, I, I just feel like that's such a gift to give to them. Yeah. It's interesting too, because like, if I think back to when I was, I grew up, we're similar age. Like I grew up in the eighties and the nineties mm -hmm. and it was just a time where consumption really started to shoot up. Yeah. And when I moved out of my house, I took some boxes with me and then there were a bunch of boxes left behind mm -hmm. and yeah. garbage bags full of like teddy bears and, and things that yeah. our parents, they kept everything. And mm -hmm. how nice to not like, I honestly feel the stress just thinking yeah. about the stuff that was left behind that then had to be dealt with. Yes, exactly. And so it's definitely a big shift. I love the book, um, Matt Paxton's book, Keep the Memories, Lose the Stuff. We've been going through that recently. And um, if you're having to deal with sentimental stuff, you're helping parents deal with that, you've inherited things, that book is 
gold and it is so helpful mm. um, in kind of shifting our mindset around it. Talking, Matt talks a lot about telling the stories around things. Like the stories are the really special thing about it, right? Um, and creating your legacy list. So I highly recommend that book for anyone that might be still kind of hung up on on sentimental stuff. Mm, that's a good one. And, and it's funny because like I, I consider myself more minimalist light. Like I do have a few more, well, I don't know how many hobbies you have, but I have a lot of hobbies and okay. I have things for those hobbies, but if I don't use them, then they go. But, but yeah, like I can be sentimental about a lot of things mm -hmm. and it's like, how do you detach that? And, and I say that I don't always, I'm not always like, yay, I'm getting rid of this. Like I am mm -hmm. happy to be making my home cleaner, but mm -hmm. not always am I, you know, like there are times where you're like, I know this is the right choice to make. I'm not heartbroken, but I'm sure. still like, there is that little bit that's like, oh, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And it does get easier over time, right? We practice and we build more confidence in ourselves. Um, so it's definitely a process. We love for it just to be very quick and neat and tidy and, you know, not get hung up on things, but there's just, it's just a process. I, I don't think there is a way that you can shortcut it. Like you just, it takes time to trust what you're doing, the decisions you're making, that you're not going to miss stuff. Like I just think for most of us, it just takes time to develop that confidence in ourselves. Yeah. And so I've got a couple of questions from some people in mm -hmm. my community. One of the questions, I think you sort of answered it, but we can sort of go a different way. It's how is minimalism changing for you as your kids are getting mm -hmm. into their low teens? I think her oldest yeah. is 14. Um, and it says independence, teen brain, friend influences, <laughs> you know, like, tell me about yeah. that. Well, and yes, because now our kids have grown up in a minimalist home for nine years, right? So then the, you know, the questions are kind of like, well, have you scarred them? Are they going to move out and be hoarders? Or have they been traumatized <laughs> in any way? What do they think when they go to their friends' houses, right? Like all those questions we think of as parents, because none of us want to mess up our kids. You know, like we all joke about, oh, having therapy budgets for our kids now. But honestly, like we all want them to have a great childhood and to... Um, not go the opposite way of whatever values we're trying to instill. And honestly, our, like our oldest, so she's 14. Um, we have really interesting conversations now when she goes to friends' houses and she comes back. And I'm sure you've experienced this with your kids too. And um, when they were younger, they were sometimes envious of other kids as like toys or other things, but that would happen regardless, whether they had a full toy room of toys. So I had to separate that on. I'm like, no, that's just kids nature, right? To observe what other kids have, to think that would be super cool if I had it. Um, so I moved, I was able to kind of move past that. But now when they go to friends' houses, um, she'll observe like, she's like, yeah, there was kind of a lot of clutter like on like kind of just everywhere, you know? And she's like, it's fine. Like we talk, you know, we're always like, they're free. They can, everyone can have their house however they want, right? But she would observe it. And she was like, it it doesn't feel good though, right? She's like, I really like coming home to our house and it's just more simplified and there's not piles of stuff. Like she, she especially notices like the piles of things. And so, um, so I think all of our kids appreciate our lifestyle because they help so much with keeping up our house. We talk a lot about like, hey, it's really easy to pick up because we don't have so much stuff. Um, it's very easy to involve them. So, so far, I don't think any of them are resentful. I don't have any fears that they're going to move out and acquire tons of stuff. Maybe our youngest a little bit. He is definitely the one that's more attached. But even with him, we found ways to just practice it and practice decluttering. And he has his treasure boxes. He can keep anything in there that he wants but we're not going to let it spill out over, you know, all of our living spaces and all over his bedroom. And as we practice it, he's totally fine with it. So it's, uh, so it's something we just continue to have a conversation about. And like any of our values that we hope our kids, uh, pick up on and want to practice later, it's ultimately they're free to do what they want. But I think we've taken a pretty balanced approach. They've been involved in it and they know that if something is super special to them, of course they can keep it. Um, and so I think we've been pretty reasonable about it too. Yeah, I like that. And and how do you get your kids involved with, you know, chores and periodic decluttering, anything mm -hmm. like that? Yeah, you know, it's, it's so I grew up in a house where 
like everything, it was a team sport. Like we were just all, it was always all hands on deck. If the house needed to be picked up, if there was chores outside, like it was just expected that we all work together. And I really appreciate like my, our parents did it in such a great way. They didn't like power up on us. It was just more like, Hey, we all live here. We all have the benefits of eating the frid the food in the fridge and whatnot. Like, so we just all do what needs to be done. And so that's very much the approach I've taken with our kids too. Now is that it's not my responsibility to do everything in the house. It's something we all share and we all work together. Um, and so when you're first starting to instill this habit with your kids though, doing short amounts of time and then just expecting that you're going to be have to, having to oversee it and direct that whole time. So you're not going to get anything done, but set the timer for five minutes, help them, direct them to do you know a certain area of picking up. And then when the timer goes off, we're done. So we keep it short. We keep it a positive experience. We expect pushback and expect that we're not going to get anything done. But as you practice that, I mean, I... I do so little in our house now when it comes to cleaning and picking up and even cooking. Now I can share that load with everybody. And so it has been really fun to look back now and see how that consistency and sticking with it, even when people were grumbling, has really paid off. And now I don't feel resentful because I'm a Enneagram 2 um, so I'm like the happy helper until I feel martyred. Like I will help you all day long until I feel like you're taking advantage of me or I'm the only one doing everything. And then I am like not fun to live with. Right. So I had to recognize that, like, I need everyone around me to be helping and pitching in. Um, and I know how good it is for them too. And so I don't want to take that away from them either. I love that. And it's so true. There are times where, you know, you, you, you're realizing like you're giving them a gift. Anytime there were, one of my kids was a really tough, young, under 10. Um, and anytime we got to discipline him, I was just like, this is great because this is helping him. Right. Yeah. And it, yeah. it, it made a big difference. Like anytime yes. you're doing it, like having your kids do something, it yeah. is helping them. Yeah. yeah. And I attribute a lot of my self-confidence today to my parents trusting me and involving me. There was not a shadow of a doubt in my mind that I was needed. Like I was a valuable member of our household and that I was contributing. I remember like, even when my parents would trust me with things, you know, like we lived on a farm, my dad would be like, Hey Don, go, go close that gate to the pasture. So the cows don't get out, you know? And I'm like eight years old and I'm like, wow, he trusts me with that? Like, that's a big deal. If the cows get out, that's a big deal. Like, that's a lot of extra work, right? And he trusted. I, I, I still remember to this day feeling like, wow, he trusts me with that. And so it, it's hard because often as parents, if our, if our house is very cluttered and overwhelming and we feel overwhelmed, that's hard to involve our kids in um, because it just feels like you're making no progress and people are grumbling and it just doesn't even matter. But as you work to continue to declutter your house, I do think it becomes easier than to continue to incorporate your kids and to like, yes, give them this gift and these skills too. It's funny you say that because so first, a lot of people, they get very perfectionistic about decluttering yeah. Yeah. and they think like, only I can do this. Yeah. And I was looking at my kids putting, my husband went to Costco yesterday and my kids always put the stuff away. And I mm -hmm. thought that's because they know where everything goes and, and they know where most of the things in the house go too. And I was thinking about how my sister-in-law, it's the same with her kids and that is one of the benefits of decluttering minimalism is yeah. everything. And I know people, they hate when, you know, we say this all the time, everything has a place, but it's true. Yeah. Everything should have a place. <laughs> and if everybody knows where it is, that's mm -hmm. so helpful. And yeah. it's so good for kids to see that. And yep. it's good for them to just be able to be involved in a house like that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So another question, um, they said to ask you about photo organization, including digital, and how do you keep on top of digital photos <laughs> and digital things? I'm telling you, digital stuff is, it's getting yeah, out of control. It is. Oh yes. Oh, don't even get me started. I yeah. am not, I don't, I don't know. I am not good at all of this. Uh, Miss Freddie, do you follow Miss Freddie on Instagram? No, but I'm she write it down. is a pro at all mm. of this. And she has classes and courses. I mean, just following her on Instagram and Facebook, you'll get tons of ideas from her. But if you're really serious to get like your digital life under control, then 
go to her account, look at her website. Her courses are like 30 and $40. So they're very reasonable, but you need a game plan. And she breaks it out based on what device you have, you know, what's your phone, what's your computer, where are all these digital photos and stuff stored. And she has like very clear steps to follow. It's kind of a beast. Like it is kind of a lot to undertake, but she breaks it down in a way that is very practical and doable. And so I just like to send people her direction now because that is not my forte <laughs> at all. Yeah, it is. It is a struggle. And mm. it, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and one thing I will say that I really like to do on my own phone is just the only tip I can really give is to create albums for mm -hmm. things. Yeah, that's good. And kids artwork, take a picture of it. Yeah. You know, throw it, in an throw it in that album. And I have an album that is so helpful for cards, like medical cards, driver's oh, licenses. Yeah. My son, yeah, he good. needed, he was applying for an apartment yesterday and he needed, we were co-applying with him and he needed a copy of my driver's license. So handy just to be like, there you go. Like I had wow. it. I didn't yeah. have to like take a picture or anything. Yeah. So that's helpful. Yes. That's awesome. Okay. And now another question is how I uh, ask you about meal planning. How does one stay consistent? Yep. Do you ever do freezer meals, meal prep for the week or cook simple meals daily? Yeah, that's really good. Um, I've had to learn some things about myself. So I glamorize freezer cooking. I'm like, wow, if you could make ahead all these meals and whatnot, um, like that would be so cool. Well, we have one who is like gluten and dairy sensitive. Um, do you know how many freezer meals there are <laughs> that like are gluten-free and dairy-free that also aren't then all vegetables? Like it's actually very, <laughs> then it's like all vegetable, you know, and then they're like, nope, not eating that either. And then, and then the veggies are mushy by the time you cook it because it was in the freezer and then you pull it out. So I just had to really realize like, okay, for myself, what makes it practical to stick to? So it is having a very simple, repetitive meal rotation. They're all recipes I can cook in my sleep now. And they're easy to vary because of like some people do like dairy and some don't. So they're all recipes that it's easy to pull it out for whoever can't have that. Um, and I know about myself, so I, I don't even look at freezer meals anymore or recipes or blog posts or even a YouTube video that pops up. I've also learned I don't like cooking with frozen meat. So I grew up on a farm, right? You would buy a full cow or half a cow and you would fill the freezer and then you would eat it all for the next six months or a year, right? And it just takes extra energy to remember to take it out, to figure out different ways to cook it so that it's not tough. I don't like cooking roasts and all the other, like ground hamburger, sure. The other meats, like I just, they would sit at the bottom of the freezer. So for this season, I've allowed myself to say, okay, we're going to use fresh meat from the grocery store. I'm not going to stock up if something's on clearance and put it in the freezer. That doesn't work for me. Um, I have to have a simple rotation. I don't try new recipes because new recipes, again, bandwidth, energy. I don't have the extra capacity um, for that right now. And so does my family love and is like so excited about everything I make? No. Like they would probably love it if I tried some new recipes. I'm not able to do that <laughs> right now. There mm -hmm. might be another season when I can. Um, but just knowing those things about myself and giving myself permission, like you can use fresh meat. Could it be cheaper to get some frozen meat? Maybe. But at the end of the month, when I look at my budget, going out to McDonald's one time wrecked the difference in frozen meat and fresh meat, right? So even if I cook at home one or two more times because it's fresh and it's in the fridge and it's ready to go, then like that made up for it. So my budget is still doing better overall. And I, I do like to batch cook meat, like the actual like hamburger chicken, like I will cook big batches of that. But other than that, I don't like, I'm not good at like doubling recipes and, and those types of things. So I've just really learned myself and what I need to do for this current season. And that has been the biggest game changer for me. I love that. And just knowing what works for you, right? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. And not trying to take on everyone else's because people that do like big batch cooking or freezer meals, they make it sound like that's the only way to do it. You know, if you're busy, you have to have a freezer stocked with freezer meals, right? And so it's hard then sometimes to realize like, oh, wait, well, that might work for them, but that might not be the best solution for me right now. It's funny too, because I did a lot of freezer meal prep in the summer and I was like, I am spending so much money. And it was because I was buying like a bunch of extra food, but it was a ton of work and it is handy to have, but it was so much work. Yeah. Yeah. 
And it's funny too, because I was, I did pull one of the stew in, you know, in a bag and like threw it in the instant pot. And my husband's like, what's for dinner? And I was like, stew. And he's like, oh, and I'm like, okay, well, what are you going to make then? Right? Like, that's what I love is it. I'm, I'm like, you guys can't complain unless, yes. unless you plan on unless making something I'm like mm -hmm. not, not interested. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love it. Well, that's really good. And so you have a rotation that you go through and is it like laid out? Like, so you don't even have to think about it or do you decide on like a Sunday or? Yeah. You know, I don't, I mean, I'm not even really great about meal planning because I get the same groceries every week. Pretty much my, my order is pretty standard. And from that, I know we can all the different, like we can cook all the things. And so it's kind of like, what do we feel like today? You know? Um, so, but I mean, Yes, because it's so simplified and streamlined that it's it's just very easy to come up with on the fly. So I should do more meal planning and and uh, <laughs> planning probably, but for now it works. Yeah, I totally and and really it is just about where you are and what season you're in in life, and sometimes it's just a bit less. And the thing is, because you have those recipes ready, you don't have to, you know spend a lot of time coming up on top of that. Um, yeah. So I will just move on to the next question anyway. Okay. So one more question was, I know she has a daughter do a load of laundry each day to keep inventory down. Um, how do you handle bed linens and towels? Yeah, good. So towels, we have one per person. So we have six bath towels in our house. Um, and they just get laundered regularly. Uh, and then linens, we have one set for each bed and then one extra set of queen and one extra set of twin. But those are just for emergencies. Mostly it's you just pull it off the same day you want to wash it, wash it, get it through the laundry. You have to get it through the laundry that day, which I like those types of deadlines. And then you just put it back on. And then I know people are like, well, what if a stomach bug comes to your house? Then we just use an extra throw blanket or a bath towel under someone. Like you can sleep on a, you know, something else if your bed sheet is in the is being laundered, but it's so rare. Like it just does not happen all that frequently. And often the person's on the couch anyway, as if they're not feeling good. So um, we have a few extra pillowcases, but it's one of those things, if you've never tried it and you grew up in a house that you had lots of linens, it's like, well, that's absurd. That's so weird. But I love the accountability of having low clothing and linen inventory that it has to get through the laundry. Like there are days where someone's like, I don't have a bath towel, right? And you're like, okay, go run the dryer, you know, but, but we never have piles of laundry around the house. We never have, we don't even have own laundry baskets. So there's no mystery baskets of stuff that needs to be put away or it's half clean, half dirty. It, that keeps our house so much cleaner now too, just not all the random clothing and linens that was always floating around. Oh yeah. I know. It's funny because my middle son his room is so messy right now. And I was like, you need to declutter your, uh, go through a bunch of your clothes mm -hmm. because he's, you know, there's hand-me-downs and they buy new things and they get hand-me-downs that they don't want to wear because he's 16. Right. And, and it's like, okay. I've said like, you wear like four things, like you can declutter so much, like your life will be easier. And that's it's sort of like handing the baton of like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do this for you, but you need to do it. So um, yeah, in, in our house now, my husband, I accidentally washed his keys once. And so he decided he was going to do his laundry. And I was like, perfect, because that's what we do. And so now I wash my clothes and I wash like the towels and that and that it's so great. <laughs> yes. No, I agree. Either, however, you can share that load, right? Like we have one person that does it all in our house and eventually we'll rotate out that job. But she doesn't even mind it um, because, like, she would rather do that than dishes, you know? So it's like it, it's – we have a pretty good division of labor right now, and it just – it works really well. But, yeah, we can't do it all. Like, we really have to share it with the other members of our household. <laughs> right? I think that's so great to have that um, – jurisdiction or whatever that eat, mm -hmm. like that that person has it's so nice and then they have that ownership yeah. and they mm -hmm. they learn that i think that is a really great skill for mm -hmm. the kids for sure yeah. awesome well don this has been lovely it's always so nice <laughs> to talk to you yeah you too robin um okay so i i don't i know i don't even need to ask this but i'm going to so where can people find you 
Yes, I spend most of my time on YouTube. So just search The Minimal Mom on YouTube and then also on Instagram and Facebook too. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here and I will see you soon.